أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إلها واحدا أحدا فردا صمدا قيوما ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والأوصياء والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وعترة نبيك الطيبين الطاهرين والخلص من أصحابه المنتجبين عباد الله أوصي نفسي وأوصيكم في هذا الشهر العظيم بتقوى الله سبحانه وتعالى ولزوم أمره قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا يجرمنكم شنآن قوم على ألا تعدلوا اعدلوا هو أقرب للتقوى واتقوا الله اعدلوا هو أقرب للتقوى واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون صدق الله العلي العظيم إنسان man is an emotional being controlled sometimes by his sentiments, his emotions, his mood. He's affected and touched by the events around him, by the words, by the actions, by the deeds, by the misdeeds. And one of the objectives of the month of Ramadan is to control this mood to control our emotions, not just controlling our desires, but controlling our atifa, our emotions and our mood too. Not allowing the emotion to overcome us. Ruwi an Mawlana al-Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad al-Sadiq alayhi salatu was salam our sixth Imam has been reported to say that the true believer, the true believer is the one, is the one. Al Mu'minu innam al Mu'minu. Ida ghadiba, when he is outraged, lam yukhrijhu ghadabuhu an haq. His anger, his frustration, his unhappiness does not divert him from justice, from the truth, from saying and doing the right thing. And if he's excited and jubilant and he has sense of triumph, his jubilation, his sense of victory, his happiness, his excitement does not admit him into falsehood, into injustice, into wronging others. Now that he is triumph, he has the power, he is in control. He defeated his enemy, his rivals, but he does not allow himself this sense of jubilation to admit him into wronging others. Though he is able to wrong, but he doesn't do that. This is Iman. This is faith, when we are able to control our emotions. Usually when we love someone or love a group of people or love a religion or a country or a place, we start exaggerate, exaggerating about our love. We start praising them, exaggerate, mubalagha in our Praise. Sometimes we sanctify people, sanctify a place, sanctify a country, sanctify a jama'ah because we are happy about them. We are excited about them. We agree with them. 
And on the other hand, when we get outraged and angry with someone, or a family, or a country, or a group, or a place, what do we do? Again, we start pointing our, our fingers at them, falsely accusing them, wronging them. We allow our emotions to control us, not, not our wisdom, not our reason, not even our conscience, not our faith. We allow emotions to control us. In some countries, they say, when someone loves someone, he starts to take him up and up and up to the higher sky, to the seventh level of the Samawat. And the same person, when they fall in dispute with the same person, the following day, the following week, the following month, he brings them down until below the level of shaitan. He's worse than shaitan. This is because of our emotions. Our emotions, they fluctuate. They are not stable. It would not, when, when emotions prevail and not reason, we're going to do all sorts of injustice to people, to ourselves and to people. One of the tasks, one of the benefits of this month, one of the tasks of not eating and not drinking is self-control. Not just to control the desires, but to control our emotions too. To be just in our emotions. How many people you've seen when they have dispute, when two friends, when a husband and wife, when two neighbors, when two partners, they have a dispute. How many times you see one of them says, no, the right is with the other. I am wrong. He's right. Have you seen this in your life? Have you seen this? I haven't seen this in my life. Always the right is with me. I am the right. He's the wrong. We never admit. We allow our emotions to control us, not faith. We lose faith at that time. We lose reason at that time. How many times we say, no, the right is with him. Not the entire right. 50% of the right is with him. We don't say this. Always 100% of the right is with me. I am right and he is absolutely wrong at the time of disputes. This is not faith. Imam al-Sadiq says, this is not an act of faith. Innam al-mu'min. Only, truly, the believer is the one who controls his emotions. At the time of anger, he never accuse, uh, he never accuse his enemy or his opponent of something that he did not do. He never. And he does not do anything to satisfy his, himself, his ego. During the battle of Ahzab, the trench, the Battle of Ahzab, it ended with only one strike. Two armies, they faced each other in one of the most decisive battles in the history of Islam. All the big coalition of the Jews, the Christians, and the polytheists, they decided to wipe out the Muslims in Medina. They surrounded Medina. Medina was under siege. The Prophet ordered the digging the trench, the khandaq. And that war, huge war, ended with only one strike. One strike. And that strike was what the Prophet says about him, about it. The strike of Ali ibn Abi Talib on that day, when he hits Amr ibn Dhulwid al-Amri, the Arab hero, the very famous hero in the history of the Arabian Peninsula. With one strike, he finished the battle. It was over. It was over. When Imam Ali took off to the battlefield, the Prophet said to his companions, he said, لَقَدْ بَرَزَ الْإِيمَانُ كُلُّهُ إِلَى الشِّرْكِ كُلِّهُ Now you see the embodiment of faith is confronting the embodiment of polytheism. Imam Ali is the embodiment of faith. لَقَدْ بَرَزَ الْإِيمَانُ كُلُّهُ The entire faith is represented in this man, Ali ibn Abi Talib. 
So when Ali ibn Abi Talib struck the head of this man and he came to sever his head, the Muslims are looking from a few meters away, maybe 300, 400, 500 meters away. He stood and he went back. He made a circle. He came back. He severed his head and took the head to the Prophet. When he came to the Prophet, the Prophet wasallam said to him, Ya Ali, why didn't you finish him up? from the first, first round. Why did you take, take a big circle and you came back? He said, Ya Rasulullah, when I was about to sever his head, he spat into my face. He swore at me, he slandered me. I was so angry at him, but I did not want to finish him up because if I've done that, I would have done that for my ego, to satisfy my anger, my ego. And I did not want to do anything for myself. I wanted this act to be solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I took a, 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 big, a big circle to subside my anger. Then I came back and I severed his head. This is ikhlas. This is the act of controlling your emotion. As Ali ikhlas amu za'mal. We learn dedication, sincerity, earnestness from this man, from Ali ibn Abi Talib. He doesn't do anything for himself to satisfy himself. Whatever he, do, he does is for the sake of Allah. This is sincerity. This is an act of faith. This is why the Prophet said, لَقَدْ بَرَزَ الْإِيمَانُ كُلُّهُ Ali is the embodiment of faith. The personification of the entire faith in this universe. Because at the time of anger, it's not easy to control your anger. It's not. But Ali was able to do, to do that. And he wanted his, his entire work to be dedicated for the sake of Allah. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ When Abu Dhar was sent out of Medina at the time of the third caliph, they expelled Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, the best companion, the best friend of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He was expelled for one reason, because he was not silent. When he sees corruption and falsehood, he would speak up. They didn't want him. They said, when you speak, this is anti-Semitism. You have to shut your mouth. Don't speak. You see the killing, the murder, the hunger, the starvation. You see women and children suffering. Don't say anything. Anti-Semitism. The same system we had it 1400 years ago. We had during the time of Uthman ibn Affan. Same thing. Abu, Abu Dhar said, I'm not going, to, I'm not going to, to shut my mouth. When I see corruption, plundering the wealth of the ummah, I have to speak. So Uthman said, we will send you into exile. When he was being sent outside, the police came to take him out. Imam Ali السلام, was in Medina at that time. He came with his two sons, Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein, to bid farewell to Abidhar al-Ghifari. And by the way, if the people of Lebanon are courageous today in southern Lebanon, it is due to this man, Abu Dhar al-Ghifari. This man took Islam and the wilaya of Ahlul Bayt to Lebanon. So they are his students and followers in Lebanon. So Imam Ali said something important in the beginning. It's a long, long speech, but the first sentence is important. He said to him, Ya Abadar, inna ka qad ghadibta lillah, farju man ghadibta lah. O Abadar, what you did, was only for the sake of God. Your anger, you took your anger on them, not because of your personal interest. You are not benefiting. In fact, you are being hurt. They are sending you out of your home, out of Medina, to the desert, in Rabada. You did this for the sake of God. <laughs> our anger has to be for God, not for ourselves, not for personal reasons. When we reach that level, when my sentiment, my anger, my happiness, my emotions are for the sake of God, this is faith. Imam al-Sadiq says, this is 
Your Iman has been integrated, has been completed. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us during this holy month of Ramadan through the Quranic recitation, through the act of charity, through du'as, through the tahajjud, to be able to control our emotions and our mood. And we dedicate even our feelings and our emotions for his sake, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرٍ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى أهل بيت نبيك الطيبين الطاهرين علي أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجلين وعلى البضعة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وعلى سبطي نبي الرحمة وسيدي شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين عليهما السلام وعلى علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والإمام الخلف الهادي المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه عباد الله أوصي نفسي وأوصيكم بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأقيموا الصلاة وآتوا الزكاة وأقرضوا الله قرضا حسنا وما تقدموا لأنفسكم من خير تجدوه تجدوه عند الله هو خيرا وأعظم أجرا صدق الله العلي العظيم We must leave a legacy when we die. If we do not leave a legacy, positive legacy, we are the biggest losers in this life. We have done nothing. If we do not leave a legacy, we are going to leave empty-handed. We must leave a legacy. We must leave something important after our death and we have to do that during our life when we are living with our full conscience with our full will with our full love and dedication the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been reported to say روي عنه أنه قال صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم إذا مات ابن آدم انقطع أمله وعمله إلا عن ثلاث Once we close our eyes we are cut off from this universe except through three channels they can supply us these three channels When they take us six feet under nothing is going to help us except these three channels Number one this person has left a legacy of knowledge, be it physics, maths, astronomy, medicine, engineering, fiqh, Islamic studies, tafsir, any ilm, any ilm that people benefit from it. He left a legacy. He has books. People read, learn from these books. They excel. The credit goes to him in his grave. The second one, which is the subject of this sermon, was Perpetual, perpetual 
not one-time charity, perpetual charity. And the third one, children who are good and noble in the community, in the society. يَدْعُوا لَهُ وَوَلَدٌ صَالِحٌ An offspring, a son, a daughter, that through their good work, they pray, they send, they send cash money, they send credit to their parents and their griefs. وَوَلَدٌ صَالِحٌ Righteous son, righteous daughter. That's it. Other than that, nothing is going to help us. Sadaqatun jariya. This is the real investment. We have two types of sadaqa. A one-time sadaqa today when you feed someone, when you give him money, clothing, medicine, shelter. This is only one time. It expires. You get the credit. You get the credit here. You get the credit there too. But it expires after a period of time. But there is another type of charity which is perpetual, sadaqatun jariyah. It never expires. It will help you. When we are there, helpless, helpless, nobody is with us, alone. This sadaqa, this perpetual charity is going to help you. What is it, the example of perpetual charity? The example of it is when you build a mosque. Many of the benevolent people throughout the whole world, they built mosques. Some of these mosques are little, tiny, very small mosques. Someone who converted his home, his apartment, into a mosque. Very small. Some of them are huge. People worship in this mosque. They come and learn. You get the credit in that life. Someone in Turkey built a mosque while he was poor. They said to him, how did you afford to build? He said, whenever I pass by the grocery shop, I love to buy this fruit, this vegetable, this meat. I take the money out, which I supposed to give it to the shopkeeper. I put it in my pocket. I say I save it for the masjid. I don't, I don't eat that food. I can survive without it. Slowly, slowly, I collected this money and I built this masjid with this money. You don't have to be a multimillionaire. We all can do that. We all can afford it as long as we have the will. The problem is that we don't have the will. We don't have that will. Sometimes a school, an Islamic school, that offers education for generations to come. People come and study in this school for generations. I know some of the schools have been working for 78 years now. I know. I personally know these schools. Many generations of people are graduated, good believers, devout, faithful. Sometimes a clinic, sometimes a hospital, sometimes an orphanage. I know a person who came to Karbala and he wanted to build Husseiniya or Masjid. They said to him, we have a plenty of Husseiniya, hundreds of Husseiniya. What we don't have is public restroom. Millions of people come for ziyarah that there is no public. He said, then I'll give my money to the public rest. He dedicated his money he built to save people's dignity. He built public bathrooms, public restroom in the city, which is very much needed. You have to assess what is needed most. Sometimes a soup kitchen, sometimes a shelter, Another person built a small hotel. He said, I dedicate this for the Zuwar. Those who cannot afford, those who sleep in the street, they can stay here a couple of nights when they come for Ziyarah. These are act of charity, perpetual, sadaqatun jariya. Sometimes you can dig wells in some areas in Africa, in India. They need to drink drinking water. They don't have a drinking water. They don't have it. So some people, they dedicate their money to digging wells, sometimes trailblazing a path in your village, opening a road, the Prophet ﷺ says, this is sadaqatun jariyah, sadaqatun jariyah. Do not assign this task to your children. Don't tell me my wife, I've written in my will, my wife is going to do that after my death, my son. They are not going to do that, I'm telling you. They are not going to do that. You are going to forget. If you don't help yourself, your children after your death are not going to help you. I mentioned this story a while ago. Someone in Lebanon, he had lots of properties, lands, buildings, 
estates. And also he built a mosque in his village. All his wealth, all his estates after his death was dispersed. It's gone, gone with the wind to his daughters, to his sons, to his, nothing survived. The only thing survived is the masjid that he built. People remember him. He had many other lands. Nobody remember him for these lands because it goes, it goes to your children. God knows what, how they're going to spend it. Nobody knows. But the masjid is dedicated to Allah. Now people come after 78 years, they pray in this masjid. The credit, the thawab goes to this man. Sadaqatun jariya. This is the time. This month. This month of Ramadan is the time to make this a critical decision in your life. Why? Because the Prophet says it during this month, ash-shayateen maghlula. Satans are handcuffed. They don't have full of freedom to come and whisper into your ears and say, no, 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 leave this money for your kids. You have kids, you have a son, he, has, he goes to this school, he, he needs that money for this. This is what the shaitan does. He deters you. He doesn't want you to spend. In this month, satans was shayateen maghlula are handcuffed. They don't have a freedom. So take advantage. They are imprisoned. They are in jail. Take advantage of this month and make this a brave decision. Say, inshallah, now in your life here, whether you want to do this in this country, in your country, in Africa, in India, in, in Afghanistan, in wherever, this is your decision. But there is a need. There is a need for sadaqatun jari. Build your home there. Build your home. Send the furniture. وَمَا تُقَدِّمُوا لِأَنفُسِكُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ تَجِدُوهُ None of us moved into any apartment, any home, any building without first furnishing it. Have you seen someone who moves into a new apartment without furniture? I haven't seen this in my life. Why do we do this to ourselves for the akhirah, for the grave? Shouldn't we send some furniture? God says, وَمَا تُقَدِّمُوا Whatever you advance, not you pay later. Deferred. Advance. تُقَدِّمُوا Send. Ahead of time, before the death. You will find it there waiting for you. This is the month of giving. Even on the billboard I was driving on the 57, I, I, I saw an ad. It says the month of giving, March. I didn't know. This is the first time. Is this true or not? Is this because of Ramadan? I don't know. March, the month of giving. So Ramadan, God promises us the month of giving, the month of charity, the month of perpetual charity. Don't forget that. The Prophet ﷺ says, when you give charity, it's from your hand, it falls into the hand of God. أَلَمْ يَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ يَقْبَلُ التَّوْبَةَ مِنْ عَنْ عِبَادِهِ وَيَقْبَلُ الصَّدَقَاتِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ God is the one who receives that check from you. Mu'mineen, inshallah, we continue our programs during the month of Ramadan every night. We have three nights of iftar, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, beginning with Adhan al-Maghrib. On other nights, from Sunday through Wednesday, we begin with Dua al-Iftitah at 8.30. And every night we have Quranic recitation and dua and lecture, inshallah. And tomorrow we are having a fundraising for the ARC Academy for the renovation of this school, inshallah. So if you'd like to help us, you can see Dr. Taqi, you can see uh, Haj Ahmed Khalifa and other members. And also we give our uh, greetings to Eid al Nawruz is coming soon, inshallah. We ask Allah to make that year, the new year a year of peace, a year of happiness, a year of stability, inshallah, for all the Muslims, for all mankind worldwide, inshallah ta'ala. And inshallah, this month, the month of Barakah, when you see this cover on the, on the carpet, this is for the purpose of iftar, when we have iftar tonight, so this is why they put this temporarily, inshallah, 
they remove it after the month of Ramadan. Allahumma khfar lil-mu'minin wa al-mu'minat. Remember every night, every night at tahajjud, after iftar, every night pray for the people of Palestine. Pray for the people of Gaza. Pray for their victory. Pray for their salvation, inshallah. Allahumma khfar lil-mu'minin wa al-mu'minat wa al-muslimin wa al-muslimat. Al-ahya'i minhum wa al-amwat. Tabi' allahumma baynana wa baynahum bil khayrat. إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات اللهم تقبل منا صلاتنا وصيامنا وقيامنا ودعاءنا وقرآننا تقبله منا بأحسن القبول وعجل في فرج سيدنا ومولانا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد